Hello everybody. We're back in sunny Oxford. And I've just pulled out the fuse tip. So that's definitely going back for a clean up. First of a few today I hope. But yes, all of this here was known as Eagle Works. We've done our research and they actually made fuses for bombs during World War One and World War Two. As you can see it's all flax now so uh, it's an area we've been, what we've been uh, aiming to hit for quite some time so we thought we'd come today. So the first of many. A fuse is placed in the nose of a bomb or shell so that it will detonate on contact with an hard surface. It initiates an explosive function in a munition, most commonly causing it to detonate or release its contents when its activation conditions are met. You pull it out and it's absolutely full. Look at all that. I have no idea, look. Looks like a bird's head. <laughs> so, that is a bigger coal trap. That's a smaller coal trap. And that's another smaller one. So I've had like three, we had two coal traps, same size, on the same magnet. Then a big one separate. So yeah. This uh, little foundry is paying off well. Find some nice interesting bits. And we've still got the rest of the day yet. Where are we again? Oxford. 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 We're in Oxford. <laughs> so, we'll keep hunting. Used as early as ancient Roman times, caltrops were thrown into a field of warfare to slow down advancing horse-drawn chariots, cavalries and foot soldiers. No matter how they were thrown, one spike always pointed upwards. Oh right, guys, we've got Glens. That's the biggest caltrop I've ever seen. That's huge. Then we've got little Marie's. So hers and sirs. We are getting a few bits, but we had a bit of a catastrophe with Glens magnet, so we'll find out about that later on. But there are other bits when Marie takes the camera down to the fine box to show you. But yeah, that's the biggest caltrop I've ever seen. That's a huge one. Another coal drop, quite a big, decent sized one there as well. I've got another coal drop. Oh, beautiful. Love them. Absolutely love them. Anyway, this lot have been thrashing around for several hours and hardly found anything. First throw, there's a tip. <laughs> Top tip. Look at some cows here, it looks similar to a, a tip of some kind. We've got a couple more cow drops. We've got a little round thing which I'll clean up and tape back just in case. And that thing there as well, we'll tape back and clean up. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I've got like the starting process of like a fleur de lis there on the top of a fence. Piece of bar. Bar. Ah. And just some other junk. Oh, you little sh
Yeah, it's a weird one. Lots of heavy stuff has come out. Everybody's uh, pulled all sorts of things out. Look at that. Obviously machined like that. Like a big X. About, I don't know, two and a half inches long. Mm. I'm going to hang on to that. Now, me and Marie have both seen this before. And it looks familiar. But on the bottom there, I don't know whether you can see that. Oh, it like says, bad. Is it bad? Got it? Yeah, I think it so. It says Lucy in the middle and there's an arrow and then underneath it says to Titan as in Titan up, not Greek Titan. Um, so uh, that's got to come home with me because I don't know what that is. It's something. I can't put that in the scrap, I don't know what it is. And that's Iron Age Axid. Or it could be a bit of cast iron drain pipe. One or the other. <laughs> what we got then, Steve? Well, we're just having a sort out, but we're getting a few coal drops, one or two that need, that need cleaning up, all different sizes. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah. That's a monster coal trap. Uh, we've had varying different sizes of these casters. But. Rusty does it again. Oh. I've got a bomb fuse tip. Oh, look at that. And if you look closely, well, Glenn will be able to show you on the fines, but there is all writing around the side. I think I can see. I that. love you, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me tip. <laughs> Possibly out of an 18 pounder or something along them lines. Wow. That's awesome. So that's the best find so far. And then we've got that I'm listening to. That I think is. A pre-machined tip of some kind, I'm not sure what yet. Pretty hollow inside. I wonder if these are the tops of fuses as well, Steve? That is a base plug, I do believe, to a bomb of some kind. But we need to research that to make sure for definite. There is uh, some stampings on 45. 45. So that could be the year, 1945. And I do believe there could be a crow's foot stamp on there, which is wartime as well. Is that thing as well, Steve? We've got a thing. A thing? We're not sure yet. Some of these bits are going back for a clean up, but looks like there might be brass on that. And this one is a really unusual one, so if anybody out there recognises that, I'm not sticking a finger up. <laughs> Please let us know in the comments, but well, that is really unusual. We found a lot of the uh, bases, but without the teeth. But Glenn's pulled this one out and it's got a tooth on it. So mm. it might do as a spare for Marie. <laughs> <laughs> but I've just cracked this one open, look. Okay. Got like a oh, that's unusual, weird shaped thing in there as well. So you always check your crud, guys. Because that fuse that Steve found was in a big ball of crud. Oh look, who found the juice harp? Me. Right. And Glenn's found the juice harp. That's the Victorian. What's the juice harp? It's one of those things you put to your mouth. Ding, 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 ding. They were common in the Victorian time. Really? Yeah. Do it again. Ding, 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 Can you put your tongue in there? No. That's what it is though, juice harp. All right. Jews harps have a long history of being folk instruments. They are believed to be indigenous to South East Asia and was introduced to Europe during the Crusades between the 11th and 14th century AD. It was played by being held between the teeth and struck with one finger. And that's an unusual one as well, guys. So if anybody knows what that is, it's, oh, it's solid. Like, it's it is cast. Like a cheap, isn't it? But it's got unusual bit yeah. in there. So. We need all the subscribers out today. Yes. Yes, everybody. If you've got any ideas, please leave a comment in the comment section. Because we might be clever, but we're not 100% clever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know point noise. Who's that noise? Look at this. The world's smallest pickaxe. <laughs> I think it's Nicola. Nicholas, I'm just going to go and give it to Is her now. Is that the world's smallest pickaxe noise? I think. The world's smallest pickaxe. Yes, it is. It belonged to, uh, you know, Tiny. 
<laughs> there was eight dwarfs, but Tiny was so tiny, he got trodden on. <laughs> so it was only ended up with seven. How many taking that back with you, Noise? Hmm? How many taking that back with you? We're taking, I'm taking it back. Of course I am. <laughs> I've got, this may be evidence of the little people. <laughs> the little people were around thousands of years ago. Yeah, that's a little person's pickaxe. And here comes a little person. <laughs> Shall we try it for size? What is it? It's a pickaxe head. I mean, uh, there you go. <laughs> that's perfect, isn't it? Are you sure that's a pickaxe? It is. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we got time, Kyla. But... What's so funny? <laughs> Where? No. Uh oh, your bucket noise. It's just got. I've still got the moves. <laughs> Neither do you think you're worried about the fisher? That's brown, that's pulled up a grenade bait. No. That's the bait plug. It is. We never get them, do we? You have the date on there. Yeah, we never get them. So, we've got the base to a grenade. To a Mills grenade, so that's the base plug. And if I clean this up, you will see when I clean up, there'll be a date on there. Yeah, check it out on the fines, guys, because this, this this lighting is terrible today. This camera. Location. We come down by the castle and uh, nails. <laughs> That's a shame. Front of a love art padlock there. Look, it's under the front half if it come up.
weird. Painted on that side and uh, like some little clasps on the, on the other side. It's weird that. Mmm. Right guys, this will pretty much be the last trip we ever have to Oxford so we're back here at the castle. I've got a set of keys. I've got a bottle, an old bottle opener. That is an old one and all. I've got the remains of one knife. I've got the remains of another little pen knife. And a little tiny fishing lure. We'll keep at it, we'll see what comes up. Beats with an old piston there, look, go, the water's eating away at that. Now the rubbish again, look. Oh, I have found amongst there, believe it or not, is if I can see it right, yes, that is army related, like an army buckle, so I'll take that back. All the rest just book. So I found the remnants of an old tin with a screw on the lid. If you can see the seam there, uh, it's all broken, so I'm going to break it up just in case there's any money in it. We'll see. So now there was nothing in the tin, there was no gold coins unfortunately guys, but we'll keep going. No! I've got a bow plaque then guys, but I've got a number 14, so it's obviously off someone's door, but I'm there by number 2 at the moment, so it's floated down the river. Well, I think that would have been a little pen knife there. So, it's probably had it today. <laughs> Last week, Hello, mate. Yeah. Last week, I've found that. That is the last shot shot gun. Yeah. I would probably have really been. Really, 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 well, we're going to do a real well. There's only someone out there with me. Well, to be fair, gonna, that's never going to be any use for anybody. Just get rid of it in the same way you would your normal stuff. Be quiet, leave him alone, just because you've got to put the uniform However, on. In the event that you find a chest of gold, then maybe we can have a conversation. We'll do a deal off of that. <laughs> 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 So there we go guys, you couldn't believe it, just as the police come past, I pull out a pair of shotgun with the triggers. And they've seen them and they've said it's kind of okay. Uh, they have to advise you to take them into the cop shop. But... You know what that is, don't you? Yeah, white enamel wear. It's a commode. <laughs> it's not. I got white, white enamel wear from World War II. All intact that one, well I say all intact, it's nearly intact, but uh, yeah, World War II era. Well, that was a proud deal, are you first? So, Put it out. Of course you can. The reason is, uh, last week we got called to a buggy with water. Oh right, okay. And somebody had thought that the buggy had fallen in the baby drown, clearly that's not. 
Lord, you can't find it. It's just up here on the left. We yeah. held it somewhere, which is why we couldn't find it. I just wonder if you could help us put it out. So also, we'll have a more stupid yeah, call. Well, yeah, you're more likely to get a call than you get a few times. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll come down and get it in the car. We're coming up here. Fuck yeah. So the police have actually asked them for uh, a bit of help. So I'll just take you down. All right, guys. So I've got a bunch of keys. I'm not sure if I've already shown them. I'm not sure what that is. I thought it was a bottle opener at first, but it's not. And it's not a Jew's harp, that one, so I'm not sure what that is. Oh. We need a lot of their help today. We've got a little old padlock, broken. Two screwdrivers and I got the I got the wick at the uh, from an oil burner. Oh yeah. How long did it take you to get that out, Steve? What the wick? Yeah, about a wick. Yeah, it took me about a wick. <laughs> 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 and then, as you can see, we got a bunch of scrap as well, and I got the pot. Is that a gazunda? It's a gazunda. Goes under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> And don't forget your vampire steak. My what? Your vampire steak. Vampire steak? Yeah. Ah. That? Yeah. That's a file. <laughs> I, I filed it under scrap. <laughs> what a pair of scissors. It's in better days though. It's, it's not a pair of scissors, it's one, one scissors. It's a scissors. <laughs> it's a scissors. Steve just found that, but we've topped it about and I don't know what it is. Let's we'll take you down because they're on about this barrel again. Talking about this barrel. It's a, toy it's a what? It's a toy shotgun. Is it? Let's it's a double show barrel. Me. It's got double triggers, but right. there's nowhere to load your cartridges. This right. is the piece I found earlier, by the way, guys. Just so I've let you know. Yeah. Because we did ask the policeman about this, but even he didn't realise it was a toy. <laughs> this is a Victorian toy. So we have to keep it. But it's based on a double barrel. It's way too small to take a 410 cartridge and there's nowhere to load it. Because you can't put your cartridges in there no. behind, behind the trigger. No. And there's nowhere on the top to load. It's a, it's a toy. Ah. Oh. Nice. And that trigger mechanism is too... Uh, it's not heavy duty enough to well, be... Uh, I want the rest please, Steve. No, but that's interesting. That is really interesting. That needs some uh, research. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here because he's actually got a good find. <laughs> that needs some research, that does. But that's got to be uh, early to mid 1900s. Yeah. There you go. Easy. Early to mid 1900s. Ooh. So it's another one for your toy collection. It is definitely a toy. A toy collection? Yeah, I have got a toy collection, by the way, guys. It's <laughs> toy guns. <laughs> yeah, it's been nice, nice to one. clean it off. That is a nice one. You've got the lines in there, isn't it? Will have been a slide up there of some sort, but there's, there's oh, no Oh, it'd have been like that, wouldn't it? A pump. Yeah, a toy yeah. pump. Let's have a look at it. Let's show everybody. Let everybody examine it. It's definitely a child's toy gun. <laughs> And I'm, I'm certain that's early to mid 1900s. Very nice, there you go. But now what we're going to do is we're going to pack up air. We're going to go on the other side of this little tiny bridge. We're going to fish right outside the castle. So let's have a look, see what we can get. See you in a minute. Got this unusual. Looks like the inside of a wheel, like the spout to a, one of them old wheels. And the end to a bit of a key there, look. Unfortunately, it's been broken, but a nice little padlock as well. So, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see the bottom of this riverbed here. So, I'm gonna have a little fish here. Okay, disc off a car, well, brake pad. Mm. 
the more Detroit is, it's rubbish. That's really nail guys. Wow. Oh, now we've handled there of some kind. River Spring. It reminds me of an old chair there, guys. You are? So can you make it through? They were sitting here for quite a while and I thought they oh went. Oh my lord. She uh, bent down and, uh, and the managed to get under. Who is that one? I know, it's in all that. Loud of shit there. Right, it's the end of the day and it's been hard work and it's been warm and the phone's going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, we've had some really, really, really good finds, so I can't wait to clean the one find up. But Steve has very kindly swapped with me for something else. But I'm going to clean them for him as well. So, brilliant day. We've got Dudley Dippers with us. I don't know if she's still got a channel, but if she has, like and subscribe. And then you've got Marie, Steve, Rusty, Peaky, and you've got me, Peaky himself. Owner and creator of oh. the channel. <laughs> He creates all right. I create all right. <laughs> Until all next time, guys. Anyway, thank you, everyone who came on the live today. You're in the chance to win a belt plaque, so we'll see you on the finds. The finds roundup. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the premiere again. Peak Dippers, and uh, oh, didn't we have a good time, Marie? Yeah, it's good. Me, you, Rusty, Nigel Perry. Yeah, was all, all the peakies were All out. the peakies was out. Um, so we went to an area in Oxford and we researched it, didn't we? And uh, we knew about it for quite a while, haven't we? But uh, we researched it before we go for a fish there. And boy, did it pay off! And it was an old munitions factory where they would have built uh, tips and fuses and cold drops and stuff like that. A cold drop, by the way, guys, um, is a implement to stop horses um, gaining on, on an army back in the day, so I'll show you what them are in a minute. Uh, we've got quite a bit to get through, so I'll try and be as quick as I can. Uh, plus we've got the um, giveaway for the belt black for this week. Ooh. But there's, it comes with a little bit of a clause this week. But I'll explain that in a minute. So let's get through this random stuff and then I'll show you the interesting stuff. So, obviously because this factory didn't just do um, munitions, it did other stuff through the wars. Um, they done many things and there's a lot of waste products, stuff like that. Uh, just lumps of normal metal. But I brought it back to show you that everything we find is good, you know, we do get the the bits that are just junk, like that. <laughs> See, we just don't know what things are. If anybody does work in the foundry industry, and they get, have got an inkling of what some of these pieces could be. Even feel free to comment. I'm sure you will. Um, we've got that. <laughs> these are just the random bits, guys. Um, I bought this back. Sorry, lump of metal. Again, nut on the top, top, top on the top, and uh, that on the bottom. Then. Um, there was this one I found. It's like a t. I oh, know that's that's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the making out of that? No rude answers. 
Then we get things big like this, which I've tapped it off as much as I can. Um, is it some kind of a, a smelting sprue? Is it some kind of... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say it because I don't know what it is. Um, then we add stuff like that, which come off casts, I believe. And that. Just don't know what that is at all. Now, I was trying to make a bit of everything, I, I think, I believe. Um, I found this, and this gave me a skate, so I thought it was a, a solid shot. Well, it's, it could be a solid shot, but it doesn't ever finish it. But there you go. So, that could be a solid shot, we don't know. I'm going to keep it in the back garden just in case, because I don't want to throw it. And then one of you, clever lot, say, yeah, it is a solid shot then. So, I'm going to keep that there. That's got a seam down either side, that's Yeah, it's like these, look. They look like they was being made into tips of some kind. Again, a seam going round. Again, seam going round, yeah. So they've obviously been moulded. Uh, another one there. I'm just trying to get through this bit that, quickly. They've got indents in the top as well, haven't they? That one has. In the bottom? Well, could be the top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. If anybody knows what they are, and they, like I say, if you're in the uh, foundry industry and you know what they are, give me an idea. Why would they all have these little slits around the side of them? You know. Uh, Mr. Penny thought he found a coin, but it was blank. Just a blank piece of metal. As is that one. Just all junk at the moment, guys. Put up with me. I'm getting to the decent stuff. We've got this here. Um, I've been told this could be a pipe blanking. That fits around a pipe that's pressurised. Give me your opinions on that, guys. Um, we've got this thing here. Because I've tried to tap it off the glasses all broke. There's glass inside there. Is it some kind of a spy hole to a foundry door or oh, something? Yeah. To the um, furnace door? I don't know. Oh, it could be, actually, yeah. So, uh, I wouldn't want to put my eye next to that. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. Nigel Perry thought this might be a tax disc holder. Um, it's very back in the day. It's very yeah. solid, so I don't know. That might warrant a bit more of a cleaning off this might, but I had to, I've got how many pieces. I had to be so careful of uh, what I bought back because of the weight in the car. That piece again to an all at the bottom, knobbly bit on the top. Right. I think we've got to the interesting bits now, and there's this as well. If anyone can tell me what that's off, it's got like a little bit of a slice there, look, into a hole each side, and two holes in the middle. So if anybody knows what that is, feel free to comment. Again, quite an hefty white, so that's that. Right, now we're coming to the interesting stuff. This is the good stuff we had from the foundry. So we started pulling these up. Which I was calling met legs. And we're just putting that size up. And that size up. And what these was, guys, was these was moulding eggs basically. There was eggs. And I'm gonna go into the next phase of it now. Because this will just show you. They would have then made them into that. Ah. Which then in turn would have been turned into that. Right. Which then would have been turned eventually into something like that. That's a big one. And these are called coal crops, guys. These are called coal crops. So, um, how we stand on Lego now and it hurts, or a plug. It hurts, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, basically, these was used in the 1800s to throw across the ground, across the fields, and the poor horses would have stood on these causing them to retreat so they couldn't gain up on another armour. I have tried to put some information on, so... Yeah, so, um, as you can see, I'll get ready to just put the camera down because I've got how many. These are all Steve's. I've given all these to Steve. Look at that. There's all... Oh, hang on, there's these ones as well. So I've given all these to Steve. So that's all the cow drops. Can we have a look at the big one? That yes. big one there, I can see. This one? No, I can see the big one there. Oh. That's it, yeah. That's, the, that's Steve's big one. Ooh. Um, so yeah, that's, look at the size of that one. 
That is probably the, one of the biggest ones we've got that day, to be fair. that uh, Still got bits of crud stuck on it, but Steve likes the red it looks, so I'm going to keep them like that for him. Um, that day also, down by the ornaments factory, um, I'll show you the best find of the ornaments factory in a minute, but the second, the, the next best finds I believed I had was was pulling up these little blank discs. Well, so we thought there was. And if you actually look on the top there, you've got like a little turning knob. Yeah. I don't know if you put this in the video, have you, Maria? Well, I'll put a little picture on um, yeah. of what when you found it in what it was. So, so these, basically, are... I've got how many of them? I've got four or five of these. I've got to run somewhere to disappear. But these are grenade base fuses. So these, if I tapped all the crud off that, there would be um, Mills 36 and probably the year that it was made. So like, let's say 1945, for example. Um, so they would have screwed into the bottoms of the grenades. Hence the factory. <laughs> Hence the factory. I do believe these were getting chucked away, ten to the dozen. But I had, I've got an eagle's eye, so I kept mine. Some bit other people might get theirs, I'm not saying that. Best find from in front of that factory though, guys, um, was these two items. So that is a bomb fuse. We reckon it could be an 18 pounder. It has got writing around it, which you aren't see on that camera. Um, there is writing around it. Um, I haven't found a year on it yet, but you can see it's dead. It's got nothing right the way through. Just a hunk of metal. Uh, but yeah, that is a beautiful piece. That is a beautiful, beautiful piece. So that would have sat basically a big version of this, a bigger version of this, hollowed out, and this would have sat in there, screwed in, and this would have been um, a fuse for the top of the bomb. Maybe an 18 pounder. And this piece was also found uh, nearby. And if you can see it has got right on. But that is also the section of a fuse as well. I don't know what section yet. I can't tell you dead on. But it is definitely fuse related. And it's also got the holes in the side. As is that one. There you go. So then was my fight. Favourite bit, Steve actually found that and he's gifted me that, bless him. Um, so I'm out of the moon with that because I collect this kind of stuff. We also found the factory name. Well, it was called the Eagle Works, but it was actually called Lucy's. Well, it, owned, it was owned by Lucy. Owned that. by Lucy. And if you look on the end of that there, it says Lucy. Yeah. Uh, so this, we reckon it's some kind of tooling. And we're not shocked if that, we won't be shocked if that is actually the tooling for the top of the grenade where the detonator hole has to be drilled in. And this would have been basically like a tap and die to put the threading into the top of the grenade. So if we do actually prove that that is a grenade tool, and then that is going to be sought after because these don't get found. Then that day we moved further into Oxford, oh my god the bridge was shut yeah how large and narrow got across the bridge I don't know we give up, we parked up, we went down by the castle and we thought we'd have a little fish there as you can see we was down by Oxford Castle and Prison it used to be a prison or oh, whatever <laughs> and we found a meat hook that's a bit hefty isn't it though? it is <laughs> I found this plaque which I was excited about it first and realised it was probably off the house in front where I was <laughs> magnet fishing. We got a little pen knife. We got an old padlock. That's a little dinky one, isn't it? Such as life. <laughs> we got um, that is a piece of army webbing. Like a, like a buckle that goes through the a belt of some kind. That's armour related, that is. The best find by the castle was two items. I had 
some barrels to a shooter but it isn't real it's a toy rifle and we're going to look at perhaps beginning of century turn of the century 1910s to 20s when the kids used to be able to play with toy guns yeah we were able to have an orange tip on the end to show it's uh, not a real gun but yeah um it's a bit far gone it's nothing i'd keep it's a double triggered shotgun um a toy like i say so the rest of it we couldn't find then last but not least down by the castle no that wasn't this was oh no this was the river wasn't it it, it was uh yeah down by the river castle it was, it was where where the uh, factory was this wasn't it was because it's on video was it oh, okay. <laughs> okay so it can't be as old as i thought it was then the the direct varying age to be honest yeah. so i actually found the closest one to this one this is called a jew's harp now this used to be like a, a, medi a medieval people basically used to play these in front of castles they used to have a piece of string going through there and i don't know where they played it but uh, yeah basically that's a jew's harp um now the nearest one i did find to this which is shocked me it was actually down by the canal because i just wanted to the river um the nearest one i found to this was like a tudor mid post medieval mm. one uh, whereas the modern ones are quite metallic and they're more thinner than this but that's a jews harp anyway guys um so now you've bugged me up for the date Marie, because i thought it was going to be a medieval one if it was out the river because <laughs> it's got that look about it but yeah well, it's, it's an old one isn't it from probably when the canals was built it's got obviously it's, like you say the modern ones are quite different in a river it's going to deteriorate anyway or a canal so now we've got to the time of the day guys thank you for putting up with me with all that because i've had to get through quite a bit there um we've now come to the belt plaque time so we're going to do the belt plaque let's have a look so again as i say every week you've got seven days to claim with the belt plaque you've got um all the names on there marie well there's a dog barking outside so peanuts barking yeah. in the living room <laughs> Um, right, Very so nice. there's the wheel, guys. Believe me, Maria's put all the names on the wheel. Yep. Uh, is the volume up? I think it is, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> so, um, good luck, and let's see who wins this week's Bart Black. Janie D. Janie D. Oh, I wonder where she's from. Oh. I'm not quite sure. Um, Janie D. Congratulations. If you are watching this premiere or somebody knows you who's watching the premiere can get in touch with Janie D. And email Marie. Yeah. Or text her. And we can get your address. Well, yeah, I shall put the, uh, my email address below. And sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll put my email address below if you can get in contact and let me know your details. Yes. Now, there is a bit of a um, thing I'm going to do. I might not be popular for this with the English people. But every plaque so far, except for Janie Day and another one, out of seven or eight weeks we've been doing it now, has been in England. Now, it's nothing against people in England winning one. I want everyone to win one, but I do want some of these going abroad. Yeah. And when I say abroad, guys, America, Canada, Australia, wherever, but England. So, the next one we're going to do is going to be no English. Oh. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to be hated for it. There's going to be no English involved on the next one. I'm only going to be picking names out that are abroad. And the reason being is I want to be fair and I want to get these belt plaques abroad as well. We should do next week as a test to see whether we can get one to America or, or Canada or Australia. And then the week after we'll see what we're doing again. But we have got about another six that we've put aside. So we're going to keep this competition running a bit longer than we said. And we might even do some other items after the belt plaques. So I'm sorry if I've upset people, but that's what we're going to do. So... 
Um, that's it, so it's come to the end of the video guys. Thank you ever so much for putting up with me with all these fines. We got absolutely louds and the car was like that, wasn't it? <laughs> on the way back. Um, so guys, thank you. Big love to all of you. Um, look out for next week's video. That was quite a good one as well. Hey, Henry? Yep. Yes, yeah, so I've got some history to show there. So um, I'll see you on the next one guys and join Sunday's Live about 3 to 4 o'clock because we was late last week. So I'll see you later guys.